there, this is Anna from Schoolbox. Today you're going to learn how to set up your courses in Schoolbox. To do that, we need to first go to the resources area. In the resources area, we need to locate either our faculties, department or courses folder. If you're having trouble working out which folder you should be using here, just ask your super user. Once in your faculties or key learning or departments folder, you need to find your faculty folder. This might have already been set up for you if you're lucky, but sometimes it's not. So if it's not set up for you, you'll need to add it. To add this, you just need to make sure faculties is highlighted, then click on the three dots and click add folder. I'm using version 15.5 of Schoolbox. So if you're using an older version, the option to add a folder will appear on the right-hand side of the screen. Enter the name of your subject, leave the homepage template blank, then set your permissions. For best practice, these should be set giving any teachers right access, and then giving everybody else read permissions. Then scroll down the page and click Add Folder. Now it's time to add your course page. Again, if you're lucky, this might have already been done for you. If not, you'll need to do it yourself. To do that, click on your subject folder. Then again, click on the three dots and click Add Folder. Give your course page a name, for example, Year 9 French or Year 8 Maths, then from the home page templates menu, choose Course. Leave your permissions as they were, as these have inherited the permissions that you set for your subject folder. Again, it's best practice to keep these open for everybody to be able to see, especially any students that are completing the course. Then scroll down and click Add Folder. Your course page will now appear. This will have been made using the template that your school has designed, so you may have different components to the ones that I have. There are a number of different components that you can have on this page. Here's an example of a course page that I've created. At the top of the page, you can see that I've created four tiles. Each of these tiles links to one of my unit pages. You'll learn more about unit pages in just a moment. I've used a text box to give an overview of the course, and then I've added the curriculum details and curriculum overview components to display the curriculum that I'm teaching. You'll learn more about how to map your curriculum in future levels. The final thing that I have on my course page is the course criteria component. This basically shows all of the criteria and groups that I'm assessing in my rubrics. You can basically add whatever you like to your course page. This is just my example of what I think makes a good course page. Your school might have specific requirements for your course page, so always check with your super user if in doubt. Once you've set up your course page, it's time to add your unit pages. The easiest way to add your unit pages is by adding the folders component to your page. You can do this by clicking the Components button, then clicking on the Resources tab, and then just adding a Folders component. This will then appear on your home page. To add one of your units, you can click Add Folder. Give your unit a name. It's best here to add the names of the actual topics that you're studying rather than a time period like semester one or semester two. The reason for this is that you may cover multiple topics in one semester and things can always change. So the best thing to do is add the name of the topic and then you can adjust the dates as required. From the homepage template menu, select course unit or unit depending on the name of the template in your system. Again, Leave your permissions as they are, as these have been inherited from your course page. It's really important at this stage that students completing the course have read access to this page, 
Otherwise, they won't be able to access any of the assessment tasks that you build here. You then need to click Add Folder. You'll then be directed to your unit page. Again, this will be templated with different components depending on what your school has set up. So you might have different components to the ones that I have. There are many different ways that you can set up your unit pages. These vary amongst all of the different subjects. I'm going to show you four different ways that you might set up your unit page. This first unit page is one of the most basic unit pages that you can create in Schoolbox. Along the top, I've got those tiles that I created previously that link to my different unit pages. I've got a text box where I've written my unit overview. I've got an image slideshow to display pictures that are relevant to my unit and engage my students. And I have a course builder. The course builder is the most important part of a unit page, as this is where we put all of our assessment tasks. The course builder component acts as a checklist for students and teachers with all of the tasks that should be completed in the course. These items might be things like read this chapter, do this quiz, participate in this forum, post this homework, or complete this assessment task. Students are able to mark themselves off as completing the tasks, quizzes, and assessments. This component allows students to self-pace their learning and also ensures consistency across classes that are studying the same course. This second example, again, has the course builder, but this time there are a few more tasks in the course builder. Instead of having just the assessment tasks, there's also a pretest, which has been made as a quiz in Schoolbox, and a few common tasks that all teachers do with their class. Again, I've got a text box where I've written my unit overview. I've used a files component to add any documents or references for my students. I've got those tiles again that link to my unit pages. And I've also added an audio component where I've added different listening practice texts for my students to listen to. This unit page is more of a hub of information as well as my assessment tasks and common tasks. This third unit page has a lot more happening. You can see again, I've got my text box with a unit overview. I've got a course builder where I've put my assessment tasks. I also have my tiles linking back to my unit pages. But the other thing that I have is a set of tiles that I've created that link to subtopic folders. In this situation, when learning about French music, students studied different areas of that. And that was broken down into listening, writing, speaking and reading. So I needed to create some subfolders to store these resources for my students. What's important to note here is that my course builder is on the unit page. I can't put a course builder on these sub pages as the system will not read it. So I put my course builder on the unit page and I use these subfolders as a hub of information. The final unit page I'm going to show you is an example of a complete flipped classroom. You can see that I've used my course builder to add tasks for every lesson. This would mean that my students would be able to come into class and work at their own pace, completing activities that they feel comfortable doing much like you're doing right now through Schoolbox. So it's really up to you how you and the rest of your faculty want to set up your unit pages. Remembering that the main thing that you need to add is the course builder.